Hi, my name is Alex Walford. I'm a systems engineer, and in this short video, I want to give you a quick introduction to Zeek and show you how you can ingest data into Kafka and and get that somewhere where you can analyze it and uh, do that in a in a very um, easy and practical and scalable way. So, so look, we have um, the internet right here. This is actually what's set up in my house. I have a, a Fortinet firewall, and just after the firewall, between the firewall and the switch, I've installed a tap. Um, this is a device that is going to mirror a port. Um, often you'll see cybersecurity guys will have one of these things. You know, if they get called into some sort of um, incident, they'll 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 run in and plug one of these in line and. You you know, use Wireshark and see what's going on. Uh, anyway, so it's, it's a nice, handy little device. You could also use a span port on your on your firewall here, but I, I'm using a tap. And this is being written out to Zeek. It's running on a VM. It's listening to a NIC in promiscuous mode, and it's analyzing all of the uh, the network traffic and creating a whole bunch of metadata. So this is a level down in terms of data volume from packet capture, um, but it provides a ton of insight into what's going on on the network. And it's backed by a company called Corelight. So if you wanted commercial support for this, um, you know, Corelight is to Zeek uh, what Confluent is to Kafka. Um, so here's the sort of big picture that I have. I've got Zeek ingesting data into Kafka. I've got a little bit of uh, enrichment here using KSQL, and I'm using Kafka Connect. Uh, to write the data out um, to BigQuery and an Amazon S3 bucket. I think of S3 as a sort of handy place to uh, have a forensic data set. So if you ever need to, to go back uh, and, and do some sort of post hoc analysis, um, it's relatively cheap to store and uh, it's, it's easy to do. And BigQuery is dead handy for a security researcher if they want to you know, write SQL queries against the, the traffic that's coming in. Um, you know, BigQuery is a natural fit, and uh, these are sort of cloud services, which are obviously all, all the rage now. Um, so this is what I did um, to write the data from Zeek to Kafka. There's a file called local.zeek. Um, I did not put a topic name in my config, and what that does is for each log type, it ends up being its own topic in Kafka, which is dead handy. Um, the other thing that I think is noteworthy here, look, I've got this package called JA3. This came out of Salesforce, and it's useful for fingerprinting clients. So often, for example, people will spoof a user agent, um, but these guy, clever guys from Salesforce figured out that you can, you can determine if something is actually a Chrome browser or if it's kind of a Java program pretending to be a Chrome browser, that sort of thing. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's a useful piece of uh, metadata as a capture, and uh, that's what that is. So these are the topics um, that are produced out of the box. There's um, you know, data about connections, what's talking to what, there's what services are running, there's you know, SSH connections, there's, there's a topic called weird that just contains weird shit that's happening on your network. Um, so that's, that's kind of, if you get some spare clock cycles, that's a, that's a fun place for a security researcher to go, to go look. Um, and so this is an example of a message that is being sent through. Look, I, I, I can see here that my, my host 10.0.1.10 has um, initiated a connection to 10.0.1.34 over this port. So you can, you can collect this, you can aggregate it, you can figure out what's normal and uh, identify anomalies. Um, here's another kind of example of, a, of, a, of a, a message that gets captured by Zeek. So it's discovered a service. So it says, look on my, this is actually my Fortinet, uh, is, is running DHCP on there. So it will sort of give you some insight into what services are running on your network. I want to show you um, uh, a quick geo enrichment example here. So I've I've written a user defined function in KSQL, and um, I can take this Zeek data and I can I can say, look, tell me uh, where these IPs are, these IP addresses. So let's let's just run this uh, little query here. Um, I'm going to have to log into this again. Just one second, because I disconnected. One second. Make it a little 
bigger so you can see Casey call. Um, and so here's my, my user-defined query. I'm looking at the connection topic from Zeek. And uh, look, it's identifying in real time um, all the response um, responses um, where they are on, in the globe. And, and people often put this in a map and you know, get paranoid when they see Russia on there and, and things like that. So you know, this, is a, this is a kind of a classic uh, piece of um, cyber in that analysis there. Anyway, let's, let's um, go and have a look. This is how we are going to write the data out to S3. So um, one thing that's interesting in here, I've got a put. Now, this is a, a trivial little detail. I, you can do this through Control Center. I personally like to open up the docs um, for Kafka Connect and uh, create this little JSON snippet. And if you use a put, you don't have to delete and do a post each time. Uh, you, you can um, just edit this and, and iterate. And usually, there's a little fiddling around to make this work. But anyway, this is what I did to have to get this to write to an S3 bucket. Let's take an, a look at this S3 bucket so you can see the data landing in there. So look, this I'm in S3. I wrote it to this topic called uh, Alex Wolford Zeke. If I go into this topic, you'll see. Look, these are the these are the topics that I wrote um, here. So let's have a look at connection for each partition. Um, it's it's um, got its own little folder. And if we were to download one of these JSON files, let's uh, let's take a look at one. Let's uh, download it and uh, t take a peek inside, and you'll see that this is that connection data um, in uh, S3. This is your, your forensic data set. So there you go. Um, on the um, BigQuery side, it's a similar story. Let's, let's have a quick look at the, uh, the BigQuery uh, config here. There's a few more things to think about. BigQuery needs a schema. Um, so what, what I did, I, I, I just put this into an Avro topic. So I, I created a stream um, <laughs> that serialized the data as Avro. Avro has a schema. Once it has a schema, then we can write this out to BigQuery. So these are the properties that I use to write this out to BigQuery. It needs to you know, know where the schema registry is and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, let, yeah, let's just uh, take a quick look. So. Here we are. This is BigQuery. This is this is that same uh, data set, and you can slice and dice and query in here to your heart's content. Um, so that's it. That's my my quick overview of getting data from the IDS, um, ingesting it into Kafka, doing some enrichment, and then outputting that into very popular cloud services, S3 and uh, Google Big BigQuery. So. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that was interesting. Thank you.